Amen. Thank you, John. Good morning. Happy Easter. He is risen. I love that. Thank you. I wanted to start this morning with a few pictures that I took years ago when I was a student. In the year 2000, I was able to travel to Israel for my study abroad experience, and I visited one of the locations they thought might be the Garden Tomb. And it's a beautiful location in the city of Jerusalem, there are flowers and plantings all around the tomb, but here you see a picture of the front of the doorway of the tomb. And I want you to look at that for a second, and I want you to reflect for a moment. How do you feel when you see this tomb with the open door? How do you feel? I mean, this is Easter Sunday. That might affect how you feel when you see this. Uh, Do you have any curiosity? Do you want to go into the door and see what's inside? Do you have any uh, sense of reserve where you want to wait outside? Is it evoking you joy? Does it evoke in you sorrow? How do you feel when you see this image? How do you feel? Anyone? The darkness is foreboding. Yep. That doorway is pretty dark into that tomb. Mm-hmm. Anyone else? What's that? You want to go inside? Okay, let's go inside. This is a picture inside. You see it's empty. So on Easter Sunday, when we see an empty tomb, and this being potentially the empty tomb, they don't know for sure, how does it make us feel um, as Christians, particularly on this side of the event? where we are now 2,000 years later of, of, of realizing what has happened and, and celebrating, how do we feel when we see the empty tomb? How do we feel? Anyone? Amazed. Amazed. Pardon? Hope. hope. Yes, we feel hope. We feel hopeful. Uh, What's that? Love, did you say? Yes? Okay, very good. Julie? I feel relieved, like I didn't want to see death and that death isn't there. Ah, you feel relieved. You didn't want to see death and death is not there. Dwayne? I feel sorry for the people that are Ah, yes. Yes, the sense of that he, Jesus is alive. Well, we feel all these things and it's beautiful. And it's part of why we celebrate today that our Lord Jesus didn't stay in the grave, but that he rose again. But what we need to do this morning is we need to reflect on the journey that Mary went through and that the disciples went through of grief um, that led them ultimately to joy. And because that journey that they go through is often what we face in life, I want to share a quote with you. And I think this quote, if, if we think about it seriously, we'll realize that it kind of describes for us what God was intending to do with Jesus, and, and it really describes for us the gospel message in a simple way. Through Jesus, God has come down to us. Will you, will you read this with me, please? Through Jesus, God has come down to us as one of us, entering the same human pain and suffering and sorrow and love and joy and hope that we all experience. God is really with us in our experience. He knows what it's like to be human. So on Easter, we celebrate the joy, which is the the bright part of the message of salvation. But we know that this joy has come after a period of suffering. Jesus is journeying to the cross, his death. And now on this day of resurrection, we say, thank you, God, that you are with us not only in the loss and in the pain, but you're also with us, especially in these moments of joy and celebration. And that the gospel message in its most basic form is God choosing to enter our lives with all the pain, with all the brokenness, and with all the good. And he's choosing to be there close to us. And that's all possible through Jesus. And that's the gospel, my friends. And that's why it's good news that wherever we are in life, whatever we're experiencing, God wants to enter into that experience with us. Let's spend a little time with Mary this morning, and let's think about her experience. When we saw the empty tomb, many of us felt 
uh, a sense of hope or joy or celebration. Christ is risen. But think about where Mary is in our story today. She was going, um, as part of her mourning of Jesus' death, she was going to the tomb to see his body. Um, Earlier in the gospel, it talks about uh, the anointing and the preparation that was done for the body of a deceased person, for the body of Jesus. And Mary goes and the tomb is empty. And what would that have felt like? Think about it. You go to, you're expecting, you're, you're, you're in this period of mourning and loss and you're going expecting to see the loved one at that place that, that you were missing and, and that, you were, that you were so sorrowful for losing and, and you go and the tomb is empty. And that must have been, that must have been uh, traumatic. It must have been confusing. And, and we see um, that she's weeping and as she looks in the tomb, and she's, she's talking with these two figures who we know from where we stand that they're angels, but from her point of view, she doesn't know who they are. And she's, she's asking the question, where is he? Where have they put his body? So let's think about that. Mary's in this place of sorrow. And often um, we find ourselves in this place too of sorrow where something has um, happened that surprises us in life. Something's not where it should be. And we don't know what's happened, and we're searching for an answer. We're searching. And let me go back here for a second. It's a little hard to see, um, but here at the bottom of our passage in verse 14, Jesus actually appears there. He's standing beside Mary, and he speaks to her. And he is present, but she doesn't realize it. He's there, but she doesn't know it. Woman, why are you crying? Who is it that you are looking for? Jesus is standing there speaking to her and asking her, who is it that you're looking for? Thinking he was a gardener, she said, sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you you have put him and I will get him. And I love this line. And and this is the moment where her story in our passage literally changes from sorrow to joy, isn't it? It's at the speaking of her name. Mary. And it's, it's as if the, the veil is torn off her face and, and her eyes are opened and for the first time she's able to see that in the midst of her sorrow, Jesus is right there in front of her, speaking her name. Rabboni, my teacher. She wants to embrace him. Rabboni, my teacher. Do not hold on to me yet, Mary, for I have yet to ascend to the Father. But go and tell what you have seen. Go and tell the others of this joy that I have risen from the grave. So we have something really interesting happening. Being in a place of sorrow, Jesus being there and speaking our name and addressing us, realizing that he's there, and then he invites us to go share the good news. It's interesting what we see here. I want to share something with you from 1 Corinthians because I think it kind of sheds some light on what's happening in our passage today. If we wrap our mind around this, maybe we'll get the dynamics of how the resurrection life works. It often works um, in this strange pattern of, of death and life. In a time of sorrow, in a time of brokenness and loneliness for us, often God is working powerfully to bring something good out of it. So I want you to look with me at this very famous chapter from 1 Corinthians. It's often called the love chapter. Um, And I want you to look specifically at the end, as we get to the end. Um, Love never fails, but where there are prophecies, they will cease. Where there are tongues, they will be stilled. Where there is knowledge, it will pass away. For we know in part, and we prophesy in part. But when completeness comes... What, as, what is in part disappears. So basically, Paul's starting to say, um, you know, in this human life, we have a very limited view of things. We only know partially what God's plan is. We only know partially what he's doing in our life. It's like we have blinders on, okay? And, and they're quite imperfect in being able to perceive the fullness of God's plan. For we see only as in a reflection in a mirror, that's almost a, a dim image that we see when we look at, at this life and, and we try to sense God's presence. But then we're told in the, 
in that next life, when we're with God in heaven, we will see face to face. Now we know in part, but then we shall know, then we shall know in full. And I wanted to share this passage with you because it reveals to us that often in our sorrow, when we're mourning the death of a loved one, when we've had a loss, when we're feeling low and depressed, and it's often that our um, senses, our spirit, is, it's like we're shrouded in a cloud and we're unable to sense. We're, we can't see past that and we're unable to sense the resurrected Lord standing there right in front of us. And, th- and I love the opening word here in our passage, love never fails. That doesn't stop him. He continues to stand there and he continues to speak to us. And it's sometimes at that subtle moment when he speaks our name, Jim, Katie, Paul, Kathy, Beulah. It's in the subtle moments when he speaks our name that that the, the shroud is taken away and we realize, yes, I'm not in this alone. I'm not in this alone, that there is life here. There is hope for the future. There is something new to celebrate and be joyful for. I'm going to get through this because you're here. I want to share a a personal story with you. We were able to travel to Pennsylvania this past week and visit with a number of family friends and um, go to the house that I'd grown up in and walk around the property. And um, when we arrived at that location, the people who own the house now were good friends of my parents. Um, As you know, many of you, both both of my parents have gone on to be with the Lord. But um, when we got there, they had these baskets there for each of our children, Um, Micah and Hannah and Aubrey, and then some flowers for for me and Katie. And I cannot describe to you uh, the feeling that that gave me to see those sitting there. Um, It's very much in the spirit of something my mother would have done. And um, the person who um, owns the home now, uh, it's a couple, and the, the, the wife of the couple, her name's Janie, is very similar to my mother. And it's almost as if in, in getting there um, the, and seeing these gifts, it was almost like an extension of, uh, of kind of this generosity of the spirit of my mother, that, that example of, of love kind of pouring through her friend Janie to us. And, and it was in that moment that I, I, I started thinking about, you know, sometimes we're not always in touch with our grief. And it's been a few years, my, been four years since my mother passed away, but, you know, sometimes you feel a separateness and a loss. But when I saw those baskets there, I felt hope. I felt a sense of new life and of joy because our God is not a God of the dead, but a God of the living. Amen? Amen. And our God, he gives us signs in life. He gives us blessings that he is a God of the living and that those who have gone before us that know him are in his presence, and they see face to face. They don't have that shroud obstructing their vision anymore. And it's the hope that we all have, that we will see him one day face to face. But in the meantime, when we're here on earth, expect for those times to come. Unfortunately, it's part of what it is to be human. We go through these times of sorrow and loss. But when they come, I encourage you, friends, remain open for that voice the voice of our Lord Jesus, to speak your name. Look for it. Be ready to embrace it when it comes and know that it will bring you through and it will give you new hope and new life. And finally, it will send you out with a message of joy and good news to share with others. And so I want to leave us today with a quote and a final final challenge. Will you please read this with me? The gospel is joyful news, happy-making news, News worth celebrating. This joy should always be our disposition when we listen to, learn about, and pass on the good news of Jesus. So when we've experienced the resurrection life in our own lives, in examples of kindness, I just shared a personal story. You have your own stories of when God has shared his kindness in that resurrection life on you. It gives us joy. And so this quote is just a reminder to embrace that and live your life in that spirit of joy. Recognize the joy of the Lord is our strength. And how can the joy of the gospel infuse our mindset for life? 
That's my first question I, I want us to think about as we're getting ready to leave. How can the joy of this moment, the resurrection, infuse our mindset for life? How can it do that? When we go out from this place, we know that death and loss are not the final word. This can, amen, thanks, Twain. It can infuse our mindset in saying, when we see the hard thing, we know that's not the final word because our God is a God of the living. He's a God of resurrection and new life. And finally, how is God calling you to listen, learn about, and pass on the good news of Jesus? Because each one of us, like Mary, have encountered him. Each one of us have encountered that resurrection, Lord, and now we're sent out from this place. And he says, go tell the others. Tell the others what you've seen about this joy, about this good news you've experienced here. And how can each one of us do that in the various places we find ourselves in life? As you consider that question, will you bow your heads and I will close our time with prayer. Lord Jesus, we're humbled. We're humbled today because we know that you went through so much to enter into our experience as humans. You went through so much on the cross to make your grace available to us. You went through so much and you rose from the grave and you give that same new life that you experienced then to us today. And we thank you for the ways that you shower your love on us and you breathe new life into what we experience and what we go through and into our own spirit and in life. And this morning, I pray that each one of us can go forth with an assurance that you are with us. May we go forth and have new experiences this week of your new life and of your resurrection power. And if any of us are mourning today or in sorrow or in a difficult place, may we receive your comfort. And finally, Lord, as we ponder these final questions, help us to know what it means to be those who share your good news with others. Help us to really know deep within what it means to let your joy permeate our mindset and to be those that share your love with others. Empower us to do this today with your Holy Spirit. And finally, Lord, we give you thanks for all these good things and blessings you've given us today. It's in Jesus' name that we pray and all God's people said.